What up, y'all? I'm over here being distracted by shiny things. This morning I was laying in bed, which is where I usually am laying in the mornings. Because I'm not young and stupid anymore, and I don't get drunk and pass out under tables in bars or in gutters and wake up in my own vomit. I was laying in bed this morning at a moment of brilliance as I always have moments of brilliance, and hence, today's Anarchy Moment, brought to you by the Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. By the way, I am the Great One himself, and you can send me email to God, that's dog spelled backwards, God, G-O-D, at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. I recently saw one of these infographics on the internet, because of course, people today are so stupid that you have to take information and put it in picture form because the average person after 12 years of public school and four or more years of college isn't capable of understanding information without pictures because they're so fucking intelligent. I saw this infographic about how women dominate social media in the sense that women are the heaviest users of social media and had various statistics on the different social medias. I think there was one of them that men comprise the majority of users on the others. It's mostly women. I don't remember which. If I, I'll try to post the infographic with this anarchy moment on the website because the particulars of all this are not what's relevant here. And when I say women are dominating a social media, that simply means more than 50% of the users. It's, you know, anyway, the, the specific numbers aren't important. What's important is the concept and the why behind it. And this is what popped into my brain this morning. And of course, yes, I'm a loser. I wake up in the morning and I'm laying in bed and I think about stuff like this. In the past, so why are women a dominant factor in social media. Why do, let's put it this way, why do more women use social media than men do? I mean, just think about that from, that's the question. What do you think is the answer? I know the answer. Here it is. Now let's harken back to previous editions of Stating the Obvious and probably some anarchy moments where I've talked about femistatism and the way that women think and yada, yada, yada. What are the things that I have discussed in the past? Women are driven by their need for conformity. Stefan Molyneux has talked about this extensively also, right? Women, this is why there are so few female anarcho-capitalists. I mean, what is, what is the most important thing to a woman? Herself. What is the second most important thing to a woman? Her children. So for a woman to preserve herself and to preserve her children, what does she need? She needs additional resources from the outside. And these resources, God, I'm just going to have to fucking repeat everything I've said in countless episodes. I'm going to try to make all this short. Women used to get their resources from husbands. But of course, we don't have husbands anymore. We now have the state. So the state provides what women need. It gives them their wick. It gives them their welfare. It forces men to make child support payments. and all. So women get all the benefits without having the husband. Now, for women to have all of these resources coming in, the government provided school system, the government provided daycare, the social security payments, the WIC payments, the food stamp payments, the welfare payments, the free abortions, the free birth control, the subsidized health care, the welfare. For the women to have all of this in, what has to happen? Well, everybody around them has to conform in the system where all of that happens, right? If people start checking out and don't participate in the system and don't pay their taxes and don't pay the child support, yada, 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 then women can't survive. So women need an environment where conformity is forced upon other people. 
Now, what else do we know about women? We know that women, in addition to wanting to force conformity upon others, are highly susceptible to conformity themselves. We saw this in, I talked about this at length and some time back, and I can't remember if I posted the PDF file with this experiment or not. I'm going to look. If I didn't, I'm going to repost it again, or I'll post it again on this one also, so look for that. But the reproduction of the Milgram experiment, where they did the experiment with a puppy instead of a human, and they were shocking the puppy instead of shocking a person, and they did it with a group of men, and they did it with a group of women. And a certain number of the men refused to shock the puppy to the maximum voltage, while, of course, all of the women who participated in the experiment shocked the puppy to the maximum voltage. Why? Because they were told to do so by an authority figure. So not only do women have the need to enforce conformity upon others, but women have a built-in need to be obedient to authority. So let's say you're a woman. You come out of the womb, and you start going through your life. You go to public schools. Public schools are you know, the centers of political correctness, speech control. You have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom, even though supposedly you own your own body, according to feminist doctrine. But you can't take a piss without permission from another human. So you go through the whole 12 years of public school in this environment where conformity is enforced upon you. You move around from one room to another when a bell rings. You have all these rules that you had no say in negotiating. They're forced upon you. You're told what to do all the time. And anybody who does not conform to the environment is what? They're censored. They're removed from the classroom. They're punished. So this is like the femistatist wet dream of what a society should look like. There's a central authority enforcing rules on everybody to force conformity, and anyone who does not obey is punished. So then our little femistatist goes to college. And what is college? College is public school 2.0. It's exactly the same thing. You go in, your class schedule is a little different, but you still have a schedule. You have particular things you have to do. You have to appease the professors. In this case, now you have, instead of having young women who are the school teachers in the public schools, you have older men, so it provides an opportunity for older men to fuck young femistatists. But still, you'll, every, the, most of these older men are creepy and weird and femistatists themselves or femisimps. And you still have this structured environment where anybody who speaks out differently, you know, we've all heard the stories, you got free speech zones where, you know, people are getting in trouble for handing out copies of the Constitution. So you, again, you've got the same thing. You've got all these rules and this conformity being forced upon the whole group and everybody has to conform and everybody has to obey. This is the femistatist paradise. So then the femistatist graduates from college and goes into the real world. And she gets a job at some corporation, and now she's got her, you know, she's got the government to be her daddy and give her welfare, and she's got the corporation to be her boyfriend and take her out on dates and buy her nice things. And in the corporate environment, you've got the HR department, which enforces all these rules, and God forbid you make a joke about, you know, women being attractive, or God forbid you have a calendar with a woman in a bikini on it or something like that. Again, conformity will be forced upon you. Anybody who does not conform will be silenced, will be removed, will be punished. And of course, women will do whatever they're told to do by their corporate overlords. Right? We want you to dump this toxic waste into the river. Sure, of course. You know, we want you to do some accounting tricks and hide all this money flowing. Of course, yeah, whatever. Right? Women will do whatever they're told to do by the CEO of the corporation. Feminist paradise, obedience and conformity is enforced by a top-down hierarchy. And these women go out into life. They're walking down the street. And some guy walks past the woman and looks at her and goes, whew, nice ass. 
there's not really a central authority that you can appeal to for conformity. Now, you can call the police and try to get him arrested for nice ass, and you can utilize the government to create laws, like here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, where we make all these laws against smoking because femistatists don't like that. You know, whatever it is. But it's not as easy in a larger society to enforce conformity. Now extend that to the internet. The internet is essentially this giant free-for-all. Essentially, kind of, sort of, but the government's working on controlling that. But somebody, for example, I can put up a website and I can say things like this. And feministatists are going to hear this and I am not conforming and I am not being obedient to their central authority and I am presenting opinions that they don't like. I'm presenting opinions that are different than the opinions of the feministatist. And they immediately have a need to force me into conformity with their opinions. But how can they do that? I mean, I, unless they're going to come here and take my microphone away from me and take away my internet connection, how are they going to force me to conform on the internet with their beliefs? The answer is simple, social media. Because you see, with social media, with things like Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, what, what the fuck ever they are, there is a central authority. Look at the, what's her name? I got it up on the Facebook, uh, the, on the Facebook. I got it up on my browser here. Maria Kang. Remember when Maria Kang posted that picture on Facebook of her with a nice body and her three kids and saying, what's your excuse? Remember how the femistatist went insane and got her banned from Facebook temporarily? That's why women are more active users of social media than men are. Because social media, all of these social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever, these are all sandboxes in the playground of the internet. The whole playground of the internet, it's hard to control what people say, right? A website like Return of Kings can exist and there's nothing a femistatist can do about it. However, if Return of Kings, and they do actually do have a Facebook page, but they can post things on Facebook and if enough femistatists report them and complain about them, Facebook will shut them down. Facebook will shut down Return of Kings. It will not shut down the femistatist. And Facebook will do this because Facebook wants to protect its user base and the majority of its user base is women. So it's always going to obey the desires of the women to enforce conformity upon other people. And women will always want to enforce conformity upon others because that's how they operate. That's their mindset. Their mindset is one of obedience and obedience requires conformity. And it's this simple. I can't believe I didn't think about this until this morning. This is why more women use social media than men. Because all social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, whatever, all of them have a central authority that women can appeal to, that femistatist, be a little more accurate, because real women can tolerate opinions that are different than their own, that femistatist can appeal to whenever they're exposed to an opinion that is different than theirs. And those central authorities, you know, the Facebook high command, can ban people that the femistatists don't like their opinions. The femistatists need a safe, controlled, regulated environment in which obedience is forced upon everyone. They cannot exist in any environment that is not an echo chamber of their own ideas. And it's really that simple. That's why more women use social media than men. It's a top-down, hierarchical, patriarchal echo chamber where they can silence anyone who disagrees with them.